good morning. Good morning. To uh, some of you who know me, um, I am born and raised here in this church, um, Gaby Christian Church. So I'm a product of this church. And Miles has a shirt on, and uh, it says, and I saw it earlier, it says, um, I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. And so, you know, this church has been a, a, a staple in the community since 1859. And when I was thinking about, I'm um, speaking, I know Pastor Cummins and I have been uh, talking about this for a while, I think in 2018, then 2019, then 2020. And when life hits you, um, the times I've been, this thought that I was too busy, I'll be honest, didn't have the time, um, the court, work does take a lot out of you and I didn't realize that at times and I wanted to always make sure that I was prepared. Um, this is a, a very uh, knowledgeable church in the Word of God. You've got students from Vanderbilt and you got, and there's probably 20 of y'all here right now who know the Word of God so you can't just lightly say, at least for me, you can't just lightly say yes I'm going to get up and I'm going to try to speak the Word of God but you no, know, in that, thank you for the prayer earlier, God still could put something on your heart. And it still will touch somebody. And so I am not a pastor. I don't know the word as well as some of you students. However, I was raised in this church. And one thing I can say, you train a child in the way they should go. And they will not depart from it. So when you start singing that song, it came up inside of me. I remember singing in this choir. And I've been in this choir. And I remember my first solo, my first song with Tanya, probably when I was a little girl with her mom, Hilda and Alexander. And I just think about all the things that happened to me in this church that made me exactly who I am to learn more about how justice should stream down. And so today, um, Pastor Cummins asked me, I think on this week, what would be the word? And God on my heart, and I'm going to probably get emotional today because it's a lot going on, but I'm going to get through this as best I can. So, pray with me. The word is um, giving you. Last year, around August or sometime, I don't know why, and I'm not sure how long this song has been out by Shana Wilson that says, Give Me You. And the song has been on my heart, and I kept asking my mom, Why is this song on my heart? And she said, Sometimes it can just be soothing, sometimes it can just help you get through. And then I would ask my staff, and just people in general, what does that mean to you? Give me you. What does it mean to you? Because everybody has a different perspective. What does it mean to you? And I kept trying to realize, what does it mean to me as a judge? What does it mean to me as a wife? What does it mean to me as a child? What does it mean to me as an aunt, as a niece, as a sister? What does it mean to me? And every time I would ask myself, it would be something different in answering. And then preparing this week, the word that came to me, that keeps coming to me, has continued to come to me from the very first time I was asked to speak at a church, which was um, Cambridge Memorial, back in 2012. And they asked me to preach on uh, the knowledge of a spiritual woman. And the scripture that came to me was Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 through 24. And so I'd like for you to turn to your word right now, Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. And it says, Thus says the Lord, do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this with steadfast love, your heart, justice, your mind, and righteousness your soul in the Lord. For these things I delight. Then I, I lean to my favorite scripture, which is Psalms verses 37 verses 4. You know, as you grow, you, that scripture means more to you and you learn more about it and it, it keeps manifesting on you. But it says, take the light of the Lord and he'll give you desires of your heart. And so this country is crying out right now. This country is saying, give me you. God, we need you. God, we need more love. God, we need more justice. God, we need more righteousness. God, we need more heart. God, we need more mindfulness in how we approach things. We need more than just enough. We need you. 
We need more than righteousness. We need the soul of mankind back. Just looking at Trump this week is exactly what this scripture is. We can't boast in our might. And we can't boast in our wealth. We can't boast in the things that aren't of God. It's time for the church, the people, the world, our members, our congregation, our leaders, our lay persons to fight now for love. To fight now for justice. To fight now for righteousness. So give me you. Give me you. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. Give me you. Deliverance. Yeah. Give me you. Peace. Give me you. Protection. Yeah. Give me you. Peace. Yeah. Give me you. Understanding. Give me you. The right elected officials. The right leaders, the people that are willing to use their power, their might, and their resources to change and move the needle from marginalized people, not for the status quo. If you have control over the needle, a vinyl, don't play song number one, number two, number three, unless number four is the one that's needed. Why? I love my vinyls. I love going right to the song that I need. Move the needle for what's needed right now. We can do that. You can do that. The world is not calling for any more efficiency. The world is not calling any more for effectiveness. The world is not calling any more for successful people. The world is calling now for more love. Amen. Amen. More justice. More righteousness. And so, I'm going to take some time for a personal privilege. Tomorrow, because of what was birthed out of this church, a vision and a mission, I believe it was birthed out of Galilee. I believe a mission and a vision that was birthed out of New Covenant is being birthed tomorrow. That's called CARE. It's creating avenues for restoration and empowerment. Dorsha and I, my wife, were able to name that. And it's for the newest court that's ever been created in the state of Tennessee. It's for people right in this community, ages 18 to 30. When they break the law and they're a nonviolent offender, not a harm or threat to society, they will have the opportunity to be diverted to the court. They'll be able to move through this court with the mandates, have their record dismissed and expunged. Part of their mandates, they will get a job, not just a job, but a livable wage job. Education yes. and shelter. And I'm thankful that my social work coordinator, one of my good friends, Mari Mabdala, is on that team with me, who was also birthed out of this church. And so this church has done a lot. And because of the people, and I, I look around the room, and I don't want to start mentioning names, but everybody that's living in this room, you have touched my life in some kind of way. <laughs> Every last one of you. But I always have to thank mom and dad, definitely, because they raised me up and trained me and made sure I was here for Sunday school, and made sure I was here for, for vacation Bible school, made sure I was here for car rehearsal, made sure I was here for this and that, this and that, and 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 this and that. It's still this and that. But, you know, I'm thankful for that. Because when times get hard, the good thing about life, when you're in the Word, you can walk boldly in it. You can walk with strength in it. And you know how to do what God has asked. You know how to love. You know how to make decisions that are just and that are righteous. And so if you will pray with me as we delve into this word that God has put on my heart as we talk about give me you. Lord God, thank you for this space. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this time. Please give me the ability to share your word, to touch my heart and the congregation with the text and the delivery. Lord, I pray for all strongholds that have been formed in our lives to be removed. I pray for God's grace and I pray for God's mercy. I pray for God's protection against all forces that are against us. I pray for victory. I pray for peace and I pray for healing. I pray for calmness in our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
So give me you. How many of y'all have heard that song? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I want y'all to go with me. Every now and then, it's on my heart to do it. I'm not quitting my day job. I'm not trying to be a singer. But I like to do it every now and then. If it's on my heart. Today or this month is here to Sunday. And as I stated earlier, there are so many people in this room that um, have helped me understand more about God. This week, I was looking at my bookcase and I saw a picture of Elder Kathy Jeffries. And she was at my swearing in um, where Pastor Cummins was there and she gave a good word and prayer and Kathy Frisch's Warren and I'll never forget when I got excited about the Word of God and was excited about my role as a child, was excited about my role as an adult when I got there, Kathy Jeffries made me excited about the Word of God. I'll never ever forget, I couldn't wait to go to Sunday school. I couldn't wait to go to vacation Bible school. And then I'd come home and whenever the preacher preached, which was great, 
I still wanted to preach my own sermon. So after dinner, I say, Mom and Daddy, I want to preach that sermon too. <laughs> and I go in my room and I study and I read and I come and preach my own eighth year old whatever sermon. <laughs> and it was fun. Um, and they never taught me no or yes. They were just like, okay, that was that was a good interpretation of what you thought at that age. <laughs> and I appreciate that. But you know, right now the world is calling out for us to be the church. And no longer for us to be worried about our titles and our jobs and where we worship. And if I'm a member of this sorority or I'm a member of this organization or I'm a member of this fraternity or this sorority, it is time now, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, to make sure that God is present in the midst of it. I'll never forget one time I was a lawyer, I hadn't started running for office yet, and I said, Mom, I really don't feel like what I'm doing right now is uh, doing God's work. I think I want to go on and go to medical school now. I think I'm going to go on and be an endocrinologist. I think I can help people better that way. Or is uh, running for judges going to take some time? I just don't know if that's God's work either. And she said, well, wherever you are, no matter if you're a janitor, you're a cook, you're a teacher, you're a chef, you're a president of the United States, the fact that you're there and that you know God, he will be present. And I'll never forget her saying that to me. And I was like, yeah, that's right. God will be present. And so in the role that I have as a judge, it's not always easy. <coughs> there are about 93 people a day that come before our courts. And we're the people's courts. All those people are hurting. They're addicts. They're mentally ill. They're unstable. They're poor. They're weak. They're marginalized. And on a daily basis, I, I will be honest to tell you, it's not a day that goes by that I don't get emotional. Just a couple of weeks ago, Nancy Amos had an interview with me before the courtroom dedication, and I teared up then, talking about the importance of the work. And so, you know, I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm in my purpose. But are you in your purpose? And if you are, are you doing the work? Are you crying out, God, give me you? When sometimes maybe it feels like, you know what, God, I, I did it. I, I know your word. I, I'm doing it. But you know what? Let me, let me reach out a little bit more. I'm on my knees now. I really need you to help me right now. I need you to help me make this decision where my colleagues don't agree. I need to stand up in the judges' meeting and say something because around the table it's not right. I need to walk through these halls of my holy world from Jerusalem because the spirit didn't feel good yesterday. You got to do your part. You cannot just come to church on Sunday and take care of the people that are in front of you. That's easy. It's easy for me to pray for my mom and my dad and Shamir and Skyler and Chip and Sandy and my wife and George. That's easy. Christy and her. That's that's easy. That's that's not hard. But what about the people I don't even know? What about the person that came before me yesterday? who was mentally ill, and then I saw in the audience that the mom was crying because they are about to get deported. Where is justice there? What I can do is stop court, and I can take a recess and allow the people to sit in a corner and talk with each other for 20 minutes when they wouldn't have the opportunity otherwise. Do I get not in trouble for that, but do I get flack for that? Absolutely. Judge not supposed to do that. The judge that got off the bench in Dallas and hugged the police officer, she wasn't supposed to do that, right? But God led her to do that. God led her to do that. You can feel which way you want to feel about it, but it's not I think God puts us in the role to do that. But God leads you to do something. Don't really worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about what people think is right or wrong. If you feel that it's love, and you need to give it that day, you do it. If you feel that your mind makes the just call, you do it. If you feel that righteousness needs to stream down in a different way, you do it. If you have to go the extra mile, which I know my cousin Christy does to take care of a child who's in need, and she's teaching them and sees that they're not receiving the lesson well, or they came to shovel, or something's going on, you do it. You step aside and do what is necessary to make sure that God is present. It's not time to boast in all the awards and accolades. All of us in this room can talk, boast about something, I'm sure. We were made to boast. But not to boast in what you're doing, but to boast to speak up and to speak out. 
about things that you see that are not right, where there's injustice. And right now, I agree with Pastor Cummings, there's a crisis that we're in. Yes. And it's not just any crisis, but this is spiritual right. warfare right. right now. It's not about flesh and blood. This is about principalities and powers. It's about the people that have the ability to make the decisions in health care, in education, in courts, and in everything that's going on in our world. It's important that we elect to put the right people in place and the right leaders in place so that justice can stream down the way Amos said. I'm reminded by Martin Luther King who wrote a letter in Birmingham to the people. And he talked about the prophet Amos. And Amos then talks about the prophet Jeremiah, where this text comes from. But if you're going to be about anything, and you're going to be about creating anything, you're going to be about doing the work for the people, make sure that it's created with the right pieces. And justice must always, always be a component. Righteousness must always be an element. And love must always be paramount and priority in doing those things. The community has to care about the least of these. The Barnes Fund is caring about the least of these. The leaders that don't think that it should be funded or I'm a judge. So let me stop. I'm going to let Pastor Cummings it's one of the people do that. I don't want to breach the judicial canons. But one day, God will allow me to Use all of my brain and articulate how I feel. But there will be a day, I'm not sure when, that I will be a judge and I'll be able to say um, the things without breaking, breaking the judicial canon. So let me stop myself <clears throat> on the Barnes Fund. But the Barnes Fund is to help individuals that are in need of affordable housing. In our city right now, has an issue with the budget, and so they've decided not to fund it in the way that it needs to. And I think if there's anything that our city could fund, if there's anything that our city could show that it's a city, the it city that's created with the right character and the right morals, it's taking care of the least of these. And that's one thing that we have that says we care about the least of these. That's one thing we're acting like we don't care about. And I can say that. I'm not telling them what to do, but it's unfortunate. But I'll leave you with this. Our current administration in our country is exactly what God tells us not to do. <laughs> Jeremiah <coughs> chapter 9. Thus says the Lord, do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those that boast, boast in this, that they understand and know me, that I am God, I am Lord. Yeah. I act with steadfast love, justice, righteousness in the earth. And for these things I delight. And so I tell us to be strong in that. Walk away today. Are you in your purpose? And are you in a place where you still can do your purpose? It may not be the job you think you're supposed to be doing. You may not even like your boss, staff, coworkers, the environment. But you can always bring God there because you're there, right? So you can bring love and you can bring justice and you can bring righteousness. But in doing that, you have to put on the full armor of God. And so in Ephesians, you know, it says, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And put on the full armor of God. So that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Yeah. Which are exactly the first part of Jeremiah that says don't boast in those things. Right. Yeah. Boast in these things. But in order to do that, you've got to put on your armor. Right. And so put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the principalities that we're fighting against. Which is not flesh and blood. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness. Against the spiritual fortress of witness, wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, so that you will be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. 
and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having your feet solid with the preparation of the gospel of God, which is peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. And then take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all power and petition, pray right. at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And then pray. Because you can have all that armor. Put on your armor. But if you don't pray, it won't be activated. You have to pray so that it works. You have to pray so that you're ready to go. So that you have the power to work in your anointing. You know what to do, so go do it. It's not about excellence anymore. It's not about efficiency anymore. It's not about effectiveness anymore. It's not about su being successful anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about being present yeah. right. with God. Mm -hmm. Allowing God to give yeah. His ability in this space. Give me you. Yeah. The world is crying out. Immigrants are crying, God, give me you. I need you. Mm -hmm. People that are uh, dealing with addiction, God, I need you. Yeah. People that are hurting, God, I need you. People that are homeless, God, I need you. People that need food, God, I need you. It's time for us to be the God that the people are seeking along with ourselves. We can do it. We can make sure that our heart and that our mind and that our souls are connected to the plight of the world of these people. This church is its founding board, has a good foundation, and everything that I believe comes out of this church is exactly what this New City Community Court is. It's the first in the state. It's the third in the country. But it was birthed off of the people here. It started here. The turmoil that I went through was because of what I was doing here. You can't have community court in a church. You can't do this in a church. You have to have separation of church and say, I said, but this is where the people are. This is where the people need the help. And then the Tennessee Supreme Court connected with me for the Faith and Justice Alliance that then put a rubber stamp on it. Oh, what she was doing is okay. So we'll work with her as the United States Department of Justice. So we're one of five courts in the nation that I get the opportunity to present to the world about our court. Yeah. And New Covenant yeah. is going to be in the archives. So when they look up New City Supreme Court, you're going to see New Covenant. Oh you're going to see New Covenant. Yeah. And I'm happy about that new assessment that we're working on. But you cut this in the video that I'm going to show the judges in Sweden and Africa and in Chicago and in California. I'm excited about that. So thank you. I'm here to tell you thank you. And I'm reminded by Philippians chapter 1 through 6 that talks about being um, thankful for the church, thankful for the body. And I heard a sermon. It was by Kelly Miller Smith uh, last year. They were honoring my great-great-grandfather for my great-grandfather in the Hall of Fame uh, at First Baptist Capitol Hill where he was a, a very uh, serious member and fervent member there. But he talked about being thankful for the church. And so I'm here. I don't know whenever I'll get this opportunity to do this. I want to do this. I want to tell you, Covenant, Gailey, thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you, Pastor Cummins, for saying yes to being our pastor 10 years ago. Thank you for being on the front lines. Thank you for everybody in this room for what you're doing. And then thanks for doing the name of God. Thank you. This church is talked about around the world. Believe it or not, this church was a founding member of the merger agreement while we even have a relationship with the General Assembly. This church. This church is on a solid rock. And so we thank God for the past and the people that you see in this, this piece of art here. I see Preston Taylor looking back. I see Gail Harris. I see Kathy Jeffries. I see some other people that are still living in this piece of art that I was able to help with with Pastor Cummings and, and Kathy. But you also have to thank God for the partnership. I'm thankful that you're my village. And so when I needed you to pray, you prayed. When I needed you to do a news article that no, Jezebel is a compassionate person and a loving person and not arrogant and cocky and all these things. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for standing in the gap. And then thank you for the unfinished business of this church. There's some unfinished business of this church. 
that we won't ever know because the work is voluminous. Mm -hmm. But it may be manifested in miles. Yeah. Amen. Amen. His already says it. I am my ancestor as wild as dream. There's going to be a child, it may be scholar. There will be a child in this room that will do everything that Pastor Cummins and these deacons and elders and everybody have empowered in them. And the work will continue to grow and go. And so I'm thankful for all of everything that's been instilled and stored in me along with everybody else here. But I just want to tell this church, thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything. At all times, if I never get a chance to say it again, thank you for letting me fully understand love, justice, and righteousness. And not be foggy in it. I know it. I'm learning it more and more, but I do know it. And I will walk it and I will do it as much as I can. So thank you. Give me you. Let the church say amen.